I like to believe that um, times are changing. Sometimes you feel like times are changing a little too slow, um, but I do realize that it takes time for change. And Chief Robert McCullough will be tasked with leading Baltimore County's police department into its next chapter. His appointment was a priority for Baltimore County Executive Johnny Oshesky. Here to talk to us a little bit about the future of Baltimore County is the County Executive Johnny Oshesky. Good to see you. Hey, great to be here again with you. Yeah, good to see you. And, and listen, big news come out of the county. You have a new leadership in Baltimore County. I yep. can tell the excitement. Tell me about keeping it in-house. Uh, Chief McCullough has been around for about 35 years in yeah, the department. Yeah, we're so excited to welcome Chief McCullough to Baltimore County. As you said, 35 years of service um, from a cadet all the way through a colonel and now mm -hmm. our chief. Barrier breaking, homegrown, has hit the ground running, meeting with the community, the rank and file. He knows our issues. He shares my values yeah. about how we do community oriented policing and partnerships using data, tackling some of the big issues out there. And so we're just really thrilled. The response has been great and we're really excited to welcome him to Baltimore County. Or welcome that, back, really. Yeah, really. And was that important <clears throat> to have someone who knew the inner workings of the inside versus going outside and have a new outlook? We knew that we wanted someone who could hit the ground running, okay. someone who would learn, if not already know the issues of our communities. And so it was a very competitive national process. Okay. We had dozens of really highly qualified applicants. Uh, but Chief McCullough stood head and shoulders above all those others who applied, partially because he had both this length of service, but also yeah. this deep knowledge of our communities. It's just so important in policing work, especially today. Part of that knowledge is knowing that Towson is evolving a little bit, as every city in the United States is. You made some moves early on put some cameras in, maybe even change some shifts to yeah. put guys and women there. Is that working for you? Well, absolutely. And this goes back to sort of being oriented in the community and the work that we do. So yeah. this is why we sat down in Towson with residents and business leaders alike. We walked the neighborhood together. We stood up, as you mentioned, sure. not just cameras, but we put in license plate readers. We had private security bolster the foot patrols that we started with our police department. Our sheriff's department stepped up. They're doing nights and weekends. So okay. it's been all hands on deck. And fortunately with that additional lighting, and just engaging the community, we're seeing positive results. Uh, Baltimore County remains a very safe place to live, work, and play, including in Towson. Yeah. Tell me about the budget. It is a very, it's a big budget, but it's also a very come here kind of budget. You've raised or are looking to give teachers a little bit more money. Same thing for law enforcement and cost of living, and you call the new standards of excellence. This is absolutely a come here budget. Baltimore County is becoming a national model as okay. we think about what we're investing in. A $4.9 billion budget that prioritizes education, public safety, quality of life. Our teachers uh, will see starting salaries of $59,000 a year, some of the highest in the region. Same, same thing for public safety, some of the highest starting salaries. Uh, maintenance of effort, it's the single largest increase in education we've ever made in Baltimore County. So we're excited about the investments we're making both on, in our people, a 4% cost of living plus steps for our employees, student loan forgiveness for our employees, yeah. but also in the projects. Um, hundreds of millions of dollars for schools. We're building those new schools at Towson, Delaney, and Lansdowne. We're putting investments in across our community, $65 million of recreation and parks, police station, fire station, senior centers, you name it. We're making the investments and we're excited about this budget. Has it been tough to fill some government jobs? Because I'm guessing, I mean, the city, same thing. I mean, they put out a, a call for CDL drivers as well. Same thing for you guys, just attracting people? It, yeah, absolutely. That's why this has been a budget that invests in our people. They're okay. our most critical resource. Um, again, the increases in salaries this year are the largest increases of our employees have seen in over three decades. Okay. So uh, not just investing in our people in terms of their salaries, but supporting them, as I mentioned, with uh, tuition, um, forgiveness, and we, we both pay for people to go to class, and now we're doing loan forgiveness uh, for our employees. Okay. This is a budget that actually has free community college huh? uh, for any, any family making $150,000 or less. We're just really proud of the investments we're making in our people and in our communities. Tell me about the investment when it comes to a Fair Wage Act. That came out of legislative session, and, and there are two sides to this coin. I think the folks that make the money are excited about it. Those who have to pay it are a little worried about what it means for their business. You know, at the end of the day, we want people who are working to be rewarded for that work. Yeah. We want people who are working to be able to support their families and we know that $15 um, is a family, a more family sustaining wage and so I was, I was very pleased to join Governor Moore, uh, testified alongside the governor to support the effort to raise the minimum wage here in Maryland. We're proud that in Baltimore County we were already ahead of that curve. 
We've been, play, been paying uh, more than $15 for the last two years now. Sure. Uh, we've shown that it's possible. And again, it's about investing in those people. And so we certainly understand all the arguments, but at the end of the day, uh, if folks are working, particularly to support their families and, and build that opportunity, we have to make sure that they're earning a wage that's fair to them. As folks seem to be coming to the county, you know, you're dealing with a bigger population, I'm guessing, since the first time you took office. Is this process different this time around? Did it feel different? Yeah, this is, the, I'm, I'm, in terms of the budget, this is the most exciting budget I'm, I'm happy to have yeah. put forward um, in the second term now. It's just really nice to be settled and to know okay. our, our neighborhoods just in a, in a way that um, we've just really been invested. And, you know, our town halls are probably a great example yeah. where we every year um, have thousands of residents come out and tell us directly what they want to see. Um, we know the community members, we know the leaders, and every year our goal is that our, in our budget and just how we serve the community, they, they see themselves in that work, in the budget and in this government. And I, sh I strayed a little bit from the session. I just want to tell me about the relationship now uh, with Annapolis, because it's a little different, I'm <coughs> supposed. I've, I've, I've seen a few press conferences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, huge wins this legislative session. In addition to the Fair Wage Act, um, there were the, the tax credits for earned income tax credit and um, the child tax credit were made permanent, all issues we supported, again, supporting our working families. Uh, lots of capital dollars for Baltimore County and a huge win for the region uh, in, in the water task force. I joined Mayor Scott and, and the, again, the governor and uh, the Speaker of the House and Senate President. We have a task force where we're going to look at this dated water system okay. that's older than the mayor and myself that hasn't been updated in uh, decades, but we're looking forward to modernizing that system. For the average person, because I've read about that, and I'll tell you, I got sort of lost in the weeds as a city resident and then knowing that the county is th this uh, arrangement. My father, in fact, lives in Randallstown, but I know that water system is a city operated thing. Describe what this means for folks as you deal with the water system. Yeah, this is about making this water system best in class. It okay. is a city owned and operated asset, but Baltimore County is responsible for contributing 50% of all operating and capital dollars towards this okay. system. Uh, and so whether it's billing or infrastructure, long-term planning, we just haven't taken a comprehensive look at the governance structure or how it actually operates in decades. Okay. And so uh, this is a task force that's going to put forward best in, best in class recommendations about how to move our region's water system forward. Um, it's changed dramatically over the past you know, several years. We don't use the same technology or yeah. the same processes as we've done back in the 1970s. So uh, time to change that. But I'm just excited that we're going to have a fresh look at this and uh, you know, be good for our ratepayers, be good for the environment and uh, just be good for the system. Okay, great. You and I always talk sports towards the end, so the Orioles are looking all right, and then Lamar, 200 some million dollars. The Jalen Hurts deal makes, it, makes me think we might get a deal done for Lamar, <laughs> okay. uh, but the Orioles are on fire. I'm loving the orange tie. Hey man, it's Wednesday, orange we're taping this. <laughs> <laughs> loving the orange tie. Uh, the Orioles are, uh, you know, I think looking good. I, I like yeah. our chances. I think we're gonna be in the playoffs this yeah, year. Yeah, that stadium will have people there. Yeah, hey, good to see play. you. Thank you so yeah, much. As always.